And the next item of business is a debate on motion 2796 in the name of Alistair Allen on celebrating St Andrew's Day. And I would ask all members who wish to speak in this debate to press their request to speak buttons now. And I call on Alistair Allen to speak to and move the motion. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, may I firstly wish you and other members a happy St Andrew's Day tomorrow. Scotland has a strong national identity, and this is reflected in the fact that St Andrew's Day is celebrated not just, of course, in Scotland, but widely throughout the world. For many, St Andrew's Day is marked through a celebration of Scottish culture with traditional Scottish food, music, dance, but our National Day also shows a celebration of Scotland's unique culture, creativity, diverse communities and international reputation, promoting civic pride, civic engagement and uh, sustainable economic and social development, although that is less important, I should say, than enjoying ourselves. Many countries have a designated date on which celebrations are held to mark their nationhood. Indeed, as St Andrew is also the patron saint of countries such as Barbados, Cyprus, Greece, Romania, Russia, Ukraine and Bulgaria, we will not be the only ones celebrating. The importance attached to a national day, as well as the degree to which it is celebrated, varies greatly from country to country. But our ambition is for St Andrew's Day to be recognised in the same manner as Australia Day, St Patrick's Day in Ireland, Bastille Day in France and Independence Day in America, with a greater tradition of celebrating this important day across the nation and more widely. Indeed, we would do well to emulate the annual scale on which the Norwegians uh, have the good sense to celebrate having a constitution. In particular, uh, it's worth mentioning also that Barbados tomorrow celebrates the 50th anniversary of their National Independence Day. So it was nine years ago when the first SNP government initiated the concept of Scotland's winter festivals to boost the national and international celebration of St Andrew's Day, indeed of, also of Hogmanay and of Burns Night, and to showcase Scotland's unique culture and creativity uh, and the very many reasons why Scotland should be seen as a year-round visitor attraction. Since its introduction, the winter festivals have gone from strength to strength, and the 2015-16 programme attracted audiences of over 300,000 people, and in addition, 8 million people across the world were engaged in the celebration online. This year, the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs has announced a funding contribution of £390,000 to support 22 key cultural events as part of the 2016-17 programme. This includes a torchlight festival in Glasgow, an open-air Cayley in St Andrews and a four-day festival of light at Irvine's Harborside. This year, 10 events celebrating St Andrew's Day in Argyll and Butte, Dundee, Edinburgh, Eastern Bartonshire, East Lothian, Fife, Glasgow and North Ayrshire have received a share of over £122,000 uh, in funding uh, to support uh, those activities. And last year, St Andrew's Day attracted 86,000 people with highlights including uh, those in Edinburgh, Oban and St Andrew's. And St Andrew's Day will grow in stature, and uh, with that in mind, it's worth mentioning that our aim is that we will see the saltire projected onto Edinburgh Castle for St Andrew's Day 2017. However, for the celebration of St Andrew's Day to be truly embedded into our culture, we also need to encourage people to take ownership of their national day and to celebrate it in their own way, reflecting their own cultural and ethnic diversity. And so this could be, for example, by celebrating the occasion at home with friends or family, by developing events in the neighbourhood, uh, by giving something back to the community in the spirit of St Andrew's Day, or by welcoming and celebrating with Scotland's multi multicultural communities on or around the 30th of November. So during today's debate, I hope that the Parliament will join me in welcoming the many successes of the St Andrew's Day celebration to date, uh, and that members will also explore the many opportunities our National Day can provide going forward. Thank you, Minister. And now Colin Morris Corey. <clears throat> Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, we are here today celebrating St Andrew's Day. Of course, the, the reason we are celebrating that is because St Andrew is Scotland's patron saint. But as Alistair Allen has pointed out already, he is also the patron saint of several other countries. 
Additionally, St Andrew is also the patron saint of fishermen, which I think you will all agree is particularly appropriate for Scotland, given our long-established reputation as a seafaring nation and the high quality of our seafood. Amongst other things, St Andrew is also patron saint of fishmongers, gout, singers, sore throats, spinsters, maidens, old maids and women wishing to become mothers. A symbol of our connection to St Andrew is that our national flags are famously adorned with the cross of St Andrew. It is prominently placed on both the Saltar and the Union Jack. The flag has, was given its place by Oengus, who vowed that if granted victory, he would appoint St Andrew as the patron saint of Scotland. Then, when on the morning of the battle, white clouds forming an X shape in the sky were said to, were said to have appeared, Oengus and his combined force, emboldened by his apparent divine intervention, took to the field and, despite being inferior in numbers, was in fact victorious. So the symbol went on to become the flag of Scotland. Though we do share that particular flag design with others, including, but not limited to, Tenerife, but their blue is traditionally a darker navy blue, there are two theories that I have found out about the Tenerife flag, trying to explain the resemblance with the flag of Scotland, which I find very interesting. One is that during the Battle of Santa Cruz, so revered were the Scottish sailors for their bravery and high standard of the sailing, that the flag was adopted by the islands to be their own. Seeing that that was a battle we lost, I have reason to doubt whether it is true or not. The second is that because Scotland and Tenerife share St Andrew as a patron saint, they use his cross as well. I quite enjoyed the story of his arrival on the islands, which has it that St. Andrew arrived on the island just as the new wine was being produced. Now, of course, it would have been rude not to partake in the local festivities, so St. Andrew took part enthusiastically. And of course, like so many others have since, whilst he was abroad trying to keep up with the locals and he's ended up a little worse for wear. Due to his intoxicated state, the local children decided to play a joke on him tying pots and pans to his clothes, so that whenever he moved in his sleep, they made an almighty clatter waking him up. The children, no doubt, thought this was extremely funny, but I doubt that St. Andrew was quite as amused. Nowadays, in honour of their prank, on the eve of St. Andrew's Day, which is today, local children collect tins and cans of all shapes and sizes, tie them together, and drag them through the streets in his honour. Quite commendable, but I can imagine there is quite a racket being made in Tenerife today. As is noted in the motion we are debating, St Andrew's Day is that. This is a day which will be full of activities, including in my region of West Scotland. I want to highlight one example in the West Scotland region, which is that St Andrew's Day is the starting point of Irvine's Art and Light Winter Show, called Illumination Harbour Festival of Light. The festivities are running from tomorrow until the 3rd of December, which includes free events tomorrow to mark St Andrew's Day and a firework display. In that display, they'll be lighting up the night skies above the harbour with a salt tower. I believe it's always also worth highlighting the work done by Historic Scotland again this year, as in previous years. And last weekend, they gave away tickets frequently so that people could enter historic sites all over Scotland in honour of St Andrew's Day. This is to give people all over the country the chance to learn a bit more about Scotland's culture and fascinating history. And I hope that everyone taking part in St Andrew's Day celebrations enjoys that day. And I also hope that they will take a moment to consider the day's background, its history, to appreciate the wider connections around the world that our National Day has. Thank you. Thank you. I now call on Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Scots have honoured St Andrew for 1,300 years, but as both Mr Allen and Mr Corry have said, his legacy does not belong to Scotland alone. He was, in today's terms, a Palestinian Jew. He was a working fisherman from the Sea of Galilee who answered Christ's call to be a fisher of men. As a disciple of Jesus, he preached widely in the Eastern Roman world, he is credited with founding the Sea of Byzantium, later the imperial capital of Constantinople, today Europe's greatest Muslim city, Istanbul. He was put to death by the Roman governor of Patras in Greece, and later legend had it 
that he died on an X-shaped cross, and it is that shape which is a symbol today. A Palestinian, a Jew, a Christian, a martyr, a working man. These are powerful words in today's world, just as they were in the first century of the Christian era. All those things together make Andrew much more than just a national saint, although he is that too, not just in Scotland, but also in Russia, Romania, Greece, and other places with a Christian heritage, as we have heard. When we celebrate St Andrew's Day, we celebrate not just our own heritage, but also the international importance of his tradition and the diversity symbolised in his life. I spoke on Saturday at the, international, at the annual uh, St Andrew's Day rally organised by Aberdeen Trade Union Council, a celebration of cultural diversity and of opposition to racism and fascism at home and abroad. The STUC held a parallel event on the same day in Glasgow. These annual demonstrations make a visible link between Scotland's commemoration of a first century saint and the multicultural and interfaith perspectives so urgently needed in the 21st century. My audience included members of many trade unions and also supporters of We Are Aberdeen, a social network created to counter xenophobia and racism in the aftermath of the European Union referendum. There were families there who had taken refuge in the northeast from the war in Syria, whose story was told by a speaker from the Amal Committee, Amal being the Arabic for hope. There were members of the Aberdeen Hebrew Congregation, the most northerly synagogue in these islands, North Americans and Palestinians, Nigerians and Poles, and Shelley Milne of Aberdeen Solidarity with Refugees, who talked about the next challenge of supporting people from islands in the southern oceans whose homes will sooner or later be inundated as a result of climate change. Those were appropriate subjects for a modern St Andrew's Day, promoting an awareness of the peoples and cultures of the wider world and the threats which they face alongside a celebration of our own religious and political traditions. The cross of St Andrew, has, as has been said, appears in many places. It is the national flag of Scotland. In different forms, it is the national flag of Greece, the ensign of the Russian Navy, the provincial flag of Nova Scotia, and part of the Union flag of Great Britain, which features too in Australia and New Zealand and many other places which are home to people of Scottish origin around the world. Our other patron saint, Columba or Columcilia, is likewise not a saint for Scotland alone. Born in Doide Columcilia, otherwise Derry or London Derry, and dying in E Columcilia or Iona, he symbolises in a way that Andrew does not the shared Gaelic heritage of Scotland and Ireland. When we celebrate Andrew every November and Columba every June, we are marking the links with generations which have gone before us. We are also acknowledging that our world is not limited by borders in or around this island or anywhere else. Like Andrew and Colin Kilia, we should look to the salvation of all humanity, wherever people happen to live. Thank you, and I call Claire Hockey to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Claire Hockey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I firstly thank the Scottish Government for bringing forward this motion and giving us the opportunity to reflect on the many benefits of St Andrew's Day as a national holiday for all Scots at home and a day of celebration for the wider Scots dis diaspora. Uh, and of course, that community is much wider than many would think. Somewhere in the region of 50 million people worldwide claim a Scottish connection. As the supporters of St Andrew's Day as a national holiday pointed out in 2007, there was huge potential for us to utilise our national day to promote Scotland as an outward looking and inclusive nation with a vibrant culture as well as a destination for tourism and investment. Scots, as we know, have been avid explorers and have contributed over the past 400 years to the creation and development of many towns, cities and states across the world on every continent. Mm -hmm. Evidence of this is reflected in the names of many of the towns and cities across the world. Rutherglen has a namesake in Victoria, Australia, and of course Blantyre in Malawi is named after part of my constituency also. Wherever Scots have settled, in addition to their business acumen and engineering skills, they brought elements of their music and culture which remain embedded in those communities to this day. You're just as likely to find a McGregor at a Highland Games in Colorado or Christchurch as you would in Dunoon. And like many immigrants, 
Scots have found societies and clubs across the, world, across the globe, initially to provide support for impoverished fellow Scots, but also to celebrate and maintain their culture and to share it with others. The first Scots Charitable Society was formed in Boston in 1657, and the St Andrews Society was formed in South Carolina in, on St Andrews Day in 1727. Scores more St Andrews Societies were to be formed throughout the United States and Canada over the following century. And there are now hundreds of St Andrews and Scottish societies, clubs and associations throughout the world. Presiding officer, new groups continue to be created and I would like to take this opportunity to extend congratulations and the goodwill of this parliament to the recently formed Finnish Scottish Society in Helsinki and wish them well for their inaugural St Andrews Day event this coming weekend. The creation of St Andrews Day as a national public holiday is not only an opportunity for us to celebrate the positive aspects of our culture and society here and overseas, it also marks the start of two months of Scottish cultural celebration that straddles the festive season, including Hugmanay, the birthday of our national bard, and also in January, the excellent and diverse Celtic Connections Festival in Glasgow. And we certainly do know how to throw a party. Those who formed, uh, proposed making St Andrew's Day a bank holiday foresaw that it would encourage all people of Scotland, irrespective of their ethnic origins and beliefs, to participate in the celebration of our national identity and social inclusion. And I believe that it has and can continue to achieve that. In closing, presiding officer, I would like to wish colleagues across the chamber and to all citizens at home and abroad a very happy St Andrew's Day to you and yours. Thank you. I call Mike Rumbles. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I well remember two very important measures. The newly, newly elected SNP government in 2007 wanted to carry on from the previous administration. One was the newly introduced public holiday for St Andrew's Day, and the other, the constituency at, my, at, my, at the time, was a grade separated junction for the A90 at Lawrence Kirk. And quite right, too, after nearly a decade, the government have been 50% successful. No one, least of all me, could accuse this government of not achieving at least half of their targets. However, the transport minister will be pleased to know, if he was here, of course, that I'll be returning to pursue this other half of this target in this chamber on Thursday. As now, as members may be aware, the St Andrew's Cross is not only the flag of Scotland, has been mentioned, but the flag of Nova Scotia and indeed other jurisdictions. It also stands for M, for Mike, in the International Code of Signals and the phonetic alphabet. It does, Christine, it does. As it happens, my older son is called Andrew, but even so, I would never presume to say that I share a connection with both the Apostle Andrew and the Archangel Michael. However, perhaps in this chamber, we all share one common trait with them. As it says in the Bible, we are all perhaps fishers of men, or in this modern world, fishers of men and women. And like Andrew and Michael, we are all searching for people to join our cause to make Scotland a fairer, tolerant, and even a better place for those who live here than it already is. Across this chamber, we don't always agree to do that and how to do that, but I believe we all share those same values. And as we come into the 17th year of the Scottish Parliament, with a Scottish Government that has more powers to improve the lives of Scotland's people, we only need a Government willing to use these powers for the greater good. Now, Presiding Officer, you never know. On St Andrew's Day tomorrow, we might all get a surprise, and the Government might actually use the new powers it has to really improve people's lives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rumbles. Uh, unless there are other contributions, I'm going to ask the Minister, Alistair Allen. Yes, it's early, Mr. Allen, but it's time to wind up the debate. We might end this debate early, I suspect. Mr. Allen. 12 minutes. <laughs> don't worry. You can Mr. Do it. Allen. You can do it. Don't feel obliged to talk for 12 minutes, Mr. Allen. <laughs> if you wind up the debate, we'll take it from there.
that I would be very grateful. <laughs> Christine Graham, a very helpful uh, intervention. I'm, I'm sure I haven't heard any member mentioning Dennis Canavan, uh, who brought forward his own member's bill, St Andrews Day Bank Holiday Bill, in 2007. And he is a gentleman much missed in the Parliament, and he did much to emphasise the importance of St Andrews Day. So I'm putting that on the record before you have the opportunity, Minister, and I can't talk for any longer, so you'll have to make up the rest of the time yourself. Minister. Well, thank you. I am very grateful for the intervention, but thank you uh, for that point. And certainly I uh, have today written to, to Mr. Canavan to indicate that I'm very willing uh, to meet with him to hear about his ideas about how uh, St. Andrew's Day can more widely uh, be celebrated. I think this has been, however brief, uh, certainly an informative uh, debate about St. Andrew's Day. I will uh, now bear in mind the name of St. Andrew, if ever afflicted by gout. And I will thank Mr. Corey for the recommendation. Mr. Rumbles uh, made a rather braver attempt to um, uh, attribute uh, to St. Andrew um, uh, saintly powers over issues as varied as uh, road junctions and parliamentary sarcasm. Um, but uh, I'm delighted that this year we are able to uh, celebrate uh, St. Andrew's Day tomorrow uh, in style. Mr. Macdonald reminded us, importantly, of St. Andrew the man, the fisherman and the disciple. And in the spirit of that contribution, I'm delighted that this year we're launching a new initiative called Share for St Andrew on 30th of November. We are encouraging people to give 30 minutes of their time to share in the spirit of St Andrew. There are many ways to take part, for example, volunteering, donating clothes to charity, or welcoming somebody new to the community. In addition, if we are to fully harness the potential of St Andrew's Day celebrations, we must do all we can to engage young people in that celebration. And so it's good to see the finals of national schools debating competitions, one in English and one in Gaelic, taking place in the Parliament uh, on Monday and tomorrow, respectively. As well as enhancing St Andrew's Day celebrations, uh, these will hopefully also help shape some future parliamentarians to serve in this chamber in uh, the future. Will the member take an intervention? I will. Stuart Stevenson. I wonder if the Minister might join me in uh, celebrating one particular uh, occasion uh, that we had to celebrate on the 30th of November 1990. Uh, members who are of my generation and perhaps a little bit younger than me may remember that was actually the day that Margaret Thatcher left number 10 Downing Street. <laughs> Minister. I will say no more about that subject other than to say that I was at university at the time. Um, there, are, there are some uh, examples I think uh, we, can, uh, we can all uh, look at uh, in terms of ways we can uh, help uh, ensure that the, the celebration of St Andrews extends to the, the whole of Scotland and becomes something truly special and unique. To help it, I will. Bruce Crawford. Something unique. I'm sure the Minister is aware that St Andrew's Day is celebrated as the National Day of Independence in Barbados. Do you think at this time of year it might be a suitable for Scots to embrace in Barbados as a, as a warmer climate than we have here? Mr. Minister. I hesitate to say anything that sounds as if I am fishing for a fact-finding uh, mission to <laughs> Barbados, but uh, I have uh, indicated, I'm very happy to indicate again, uh, Scotland's warm uh, wishes uh, to Barbados on the 50th, uh, sorry, on, on, the, on its uh, national uh, uh, day. Um, I would like also uh, to, to in help engage Scotland's diverse communities uh, within the country in the St Andrew's Day celebrations, and we are providing Bemis Scotland with a funding contribution of £54,000 to deliver a, a multicultural celebration of the 2016 Year of uh, Innovation, Architecture and Design and Scotland's Winter Festivals. This year's programme is developing well and includes 11 events developed by multicultural communities. The programme builds on 2015 activity which uh, attracted 12,000 people uh, uh, to 65 multicultural events across Scotland, eight of these specifically celebrating St Andrew's Day. 
The key to the success of the multicultural celebration around St Andrew's Days has been a warm invitation to take part in the celebration, the provision of inspiration and support, alongside an absolute willingness to accept that people will also want to celebrate uh, the National Day in their own way and in their own time. In time, if we keep innovation, inspiration, collaboration and, crucially, the engagement of the community at the heart of all our St Andrew's Day activities, we will see the celebration of St Andrew's Day grow to new heights, boosting our economy, enhancing our international profile and, most importantly, emphasising a unity through the celebration of the wide diversity of faiths, cultures and ethnic origins that is the reality of Scotland today. But more than anything else, though, as we celebrate everything, the many things that are to celebrate about our national identity and culture, uh, we shouldn't be too dear to say this, that St Andrew's Day uh, is a day for Scotland to enjoy itself. So I hope that members will join me in wishing the people of Scotland and those with an affinity to Scotland a very happy St Andrew's Day when it comes. La Ulla. Thank you, Minister. Um, normally, we'd move on to the next item of business, um, which would be a bureau motion, but I think, given that we finished a little bit early, I think we'll suspend business for five minutes and we will uh, till, till five o'clock, and we'll meet again at five o'clock. So, suspending business for five minutes. <laughs>